Steve, if you're ready, let's roll them. As Kara mentioned, my name is Jeff, and this is Cody. For clarification, she's a girl. Going back to the 90s, I knew I wanted to do some sort of a natural color study. I also knew that I wanted to be a dad to a golden retriever someday. Little did I know, both would have to wait until 2015. My day job has had me working with all kinds of colors for a long time, but my personal favorites have always been those found in nature. In 2015, I met local naturalist and horticulturist Jim Foster. Over a beer, I told him what I wanted to do, and he instantly wanted to help. His vast knowledge and enthusiasm for the project <clears throat> had me get it started. That first year, I wanted to focus on fall color and ended up spending quite a bit of time in the Bridgers and Gallatins waiting for those colors to pop. After talking to friends and acquaintances over the following winter, I, wanted, I determined that I wanted to do a more comprehensive study in an effort to see a more complete spectrum of the natural colors that were out there. The renewed objective was to include some of everything. So I chose to work with five categories, fall foliage, wildflowers, soils, rocks, and natural grasses. Collectively, I thought that the combination of these primary, secondary, muted, neutral, and earth tones would accomplish what I had in mind. The collection range began as being 100 miles in all directions from Bozeman. Over time, I expanded that range to include the entire Rocky Mountain corridor of Montana, which then spread south to include the Tetons, the Black Hills of South Dakota, Summit County, Colorado, and eventually the deserts of the Southwest. In the name of bringing the colors of the outdoors indoors, I knew that at some point I'd want to cross over a portion of the physical collection to paint colors. A couple of years into the project, there was quite an assortment, so it was time to start the curating process. It soon became apparent that documenting different items would call for different methods. That's when my longtime friend and very talented photographer, Roper Green, got involved. The flower and foliage categories were field press, so I felt it necessary to capture those vibrant colors fresh out of the press before time muted their color. Roper's photography not only captured the colors, but also a lifelike dimension. As the dozens of high-resolution photos turned into hundreds, we started to realize that other than reliable color standards, some images also possessed an engaging aesthetic. This had Roper summon his uh, graphic design skills and convert the images into an extensive line of G. Clay print series. With the soils category, we were excited to receive assistance from the MSU Land Resource Department with some soil identification. Graduate student Brianna Whitehead and Dr. Tony Hartshorn informed us that soil comes in several forms, including clay, loam, inceptisol, decomposed rock, and sand. Although the soils and rocks don't fade over time, we photographed certain groupings to represent the different regions. This grouping was found within 100 miles of Bozeman. For each soil sample, I also like to saturate a small portion of the dry sample or wet uh, to show the wet color as well. As the collection range expanded, so did the variety of colors. I like to compare not only the differences, but the similarities shared throughout the mountain, valley, plains, and desert colors. The variety of the soil category can metaphorically be compared to the variety of people that exist. We come in a lot of colors too. Although the colors in the rock and scree category often resemble those of the soils, Rocks provide the simple yet informative visual that demonstrates how texture, light, shadows, and color uh, affect a color, excuse me. If an, if an item does have texture or has a cast, uh, a shadow over it, it'll typically appear to be a darker color than it actually is. Producing the color palette spanned nearly a year. My good friend Jim Schumacher was in charge of that and made all, close to 9,000 color cards that we used to create several copies of the color library. Jim also built amazing custom items from reclaimed wood that have added significantly to the collection's presentation. As our efforts progressed, the Benjamin Moore Paint Company began to show interest in what we were doing and in 2017 made a couple trips to Bozeman to see and interact with what was by now the, referred to as the Keller Collection. During their visit, Color Department Head Carl Minshew offered a fun suggestion, which coincidentally my friend Kelsey Westphere had also hinted at. He said, next time you photograph, try doing something on, of these on black. I think you'll like it. 
And as you see, we, we did just that. And while photographing on bright white produces the mo most accurate color standards, the black alternatives speak for themselves. From a design standpoint, the second neutral option also accommodates the different spaces and preferences that people have. As we closed in on the original objective of bringing the outdoor colors indoors, it was time to organize the color cards into a working palette. As that progress played out, I removed any overlapping redundancy and settled on this assortment of 460 colors separated into eight color families. After hearing about the project in 2020, we received some attention from the international color community who informed us that what we had was what they refer to as a great color story. From their perspective, they saw this color project as being representative of places all over the world. They simply saw colors of the earth. I don't personally have an international perspective on color, but I'm aware that spectacular scenery that's full of color exists everywhere. To some degree, we're all inspired and influenced by the colors around us. Colors one of life's simple pleasures, and I've always had the opinion that every color looks just right somewhere. There's a lot of people that can take pride in how they've touched or influenced whatever this is. My takeaways are the collaborations with old and new friends and just seeing people interact and connect with something in the collection. I'll always be grateful to my coworkers at the paint factory who've allowed me to indulge in this hobby for what's now been seven years. Saving the best for last, for those that haven't met Cody, you've probably figured out that she's not only my baby, she also likes being out in nature. We've covered a lot of ground with this project, which now includes more than a million square miles, but its roots being right here, first and foremost, this will always be a Montana color story. Thank you.